Welcome back to another basic game maker studio tutorial and this time it will be on tileset. A very, hopefully a very comprehensive guide because maybe you are setting your tile set up and you're thinking like, uh, what does that mean? What is this? And you are a little bit confused what those properties mean and because they are kind of, uh, well, confusing at start and maybe confusing in the end as well, but maybe after that you will get better understanding of all that stuff and for example one of those sweet functions which is auto tiling love it so if you want to know that and a few things more concerning tile sets stay tuned this is one up indie i am the developer of the indie game clunky salt and a programmer slash pixel artist so if you're new here and you want more consider subscribing to my channel because i I to upload every day a video so let's get right into the good stuff so with the left mouse button for example you can uh, well plant some tiles on the screen and we get rid of you because we don't need you so first of all what are tiles it's basically they are just on the grid uh, little pieces which you can just put on the screen and for most times they are just like cosmetic so the level looks good and of course you can use them for collisions but this is a thing for another video so here on your room editor which you have on the left side most of the time you can create a new tile layer and then you need to assign it a tile set the tile set is just in the end one big sprite so for example this one a link in the description because there are a few things which i want to show you delete and here for example you create a new tile set because here we do all the magic you can of course call it whatever you like we just leave it here with the same name and then we assign it a sprite bam and then to our tile set we need to say hey which one we want to use of course our new one and now you can see it pops up your stuff and you can already draw stuff on the screen and i don't know mark it and like do already so this is the quick and easy fix how to do that and you could be already finished but there's a little bit more to the whole thing because these properties if you see them most of the time you won't be using let's say those four years so tile offset x y and separation x and y the most important one is how you want to separate your tile set how big are your tiles and this is because it's a 16 by 16 we have every tile 16 by 16 a piece so this is pretty well standard of course they are bigger tile sets and smaller but most of the time they're 16 by 16 sometimes 32 by 32 and then if you go like really small i've even seen a 4x4 tile set which is just ridiculously small but it does exist but these are rather exotic ones so what you need to know is first of all your well your tile properties of the separation so each tile and then for example you have like an offset but it just puts everything let's say 20 pixels to the right or 200 wham as you can see this are just manual uh, inputs which you can put in not too terribly important in my opinion just leave it be and here tile separation x and y this is a, a more important one sometimes at least because here as you can see now your tiles are being separated and have let's say blank spaces in between because sometimes um the designers don't uh, do their tile sets like this from so their one coherent block maybe they just separate it because it is as you can see easier maybe for them to distinguish those parts because here what you see is everything is put together but is this top part is the bottom which part is this one Maybe it's a little bit difficult to distinguish and therefore um, you can see a tile set like this and maybe you don't want to put it together and do something like this and therefore uh, well we don't need to do anything there so this is just one way how you can separate it and maybe you want to put it here back together to a regular state but let's go by zero because eh 
we don't need. So the next part is, for example, you see like, okay, output border X and Y and they are two per default. So what does that actually mean? And this is a thing which is called, um, or there is a thing which is called tile tiering. So let's, for example, you're having a zoom in in your game, but you're not zooming in with a pixel perfect thing. And for example, you would be having blank spaces in between, which look kind of bad. And therefore, there is a little function which is called clamp or texture clamp in Game Maker Studio. And what it does, it's just taking the border, so the pixels of the border here, for example, the last pixel, and it will just repeat for two pixels downwards. And therefore, it is forcing uh, your the output to produce those pixels so you don't have blank spaces in between in the game. So this is quite important. And therefore, you can, I don't know, ramp it up, I don't know, let's say to, to 10 or 20, but normally two or three is, is way good enough. This is just so you don't have any blank spaces and then it would look kind of silly. So this is for that. Just leave it be here. This is just for the texture group. Texture groups you can find under here. Texture groups. Not gonna go into that because this is just assigning it to there. Not too terribly important. If you want to know something about texture group, links and uh, about texture group, link in the description. You can find it there. Here, this guy, this the source sprite export, and then we are pretty much finished with the properties. It's just if you are using the sprite additionally for something else besides your tile set, then you unflag it. Normally it's just on default because as most programmers or as most designers do, they have just one sprite. They use it as a tile set, easy peasy. But if you would be using the same sprite for something else, God knows what, I'm not really sure what else you could use it for, but maybe there are some other applications, then um, unflag it because then it will be duplicated two times on your texture page. So this will be copied two times because you're using it for different kind of purposes. One for the tile set and one for God knows the other thing. So let's kill that because we don't need. And then you will see, okay, sweet. I can already use it. And then we go into auto tiling because I guess this is the most interesting one here. You just have two options. Um, Let's do plus one and what you're seeing are gray shapes and the white shape is basically the shape you want to fill it with stuff with and the uh, the black one is could be transparent like here. So let's zoom in. So for example, this could be your transparency level and maybe if you're doing a top down game, you're just having, let's say, a tile set with, where you're going from dirt into uh, grass, which does of, of course exist as well then no 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 <laughs> i killed the whole nice um then you would be going uh, you wouldn't be having any transparency you would just go from one thing to the other one so the the tile set would look a little bit different and of course you can do that with 47 kind of combinations so this is of course possible as well so let's go and create this one for example here what you see here this is completely uh well, full and to illustrate it a little bit nicer because why not? I made it uh, in this thing. Of course, you find it in the description as well. Just mark them as green so they are a little bit more visible. So this area is basically one of those things. And for example, let's go into well uh, this thing here. So this would be one of those guys here. And then we come to this part and if you're unsure, okay, what is this? Because uh, what could this represent? And I thought it's one of those corners. Wrong. <laughs> it is this guy here. So let's uh, mark it. So this is basically this whole tile set. And of course here, this one is this guy here. And if you're looking, okay, but what about those corners? So which are those guys here? Those small ones here. And I cannot paint on here. I want to paint on here. So this is, for example, this guy here is 
this corner so just keep that in mind of course if you're having let's say two corners that would be i don't know something like ooh, two corners touching uh, let's not get too excited here uh, yeah so for example if i would be using this i just put this guy here this i just speed it up a little bit bam uh, come on uh, what are you what do you look like uh, this uh, this and for example here we don't have one so we just go for a transparent version bam mm -hmm. yep something transparent as well uh, yep 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 uh, what are you you are this you are this and you are transparent as well because we don't need it. of course if you need a little bit help you can go and do the overlay so you can see ah ha this could be of interest so they just give you the option of course you can add multiple ones if you want but we don't want so we kill all of you but not all just this guy and for example let's go into our room then you are on your tile set and then you have like besides tiles brushes and libraries and now you're filling a uh -huh, auto tile of course you can rename it if you like and now you can see oh sweet we can paint with it and right mouse button we can delete it again so this does work pretty sweet and the next thing is for example you can go into your tile set again because we just don't have auto tiles we have different things for example we have the brush builder and the brush builder is just basically in my opinion a stamping of things so let's say you like this tree or you have a house or something bam you put it in and maybe in this tree as well as you can see now you have them in we save it up go into the room and now you will find your brushes here so and as you can see now they are marked and you can stamp 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 so if you're having repeating structures or things which you want to stamp because they are repeated and then you don't just don't want to go into tiles mark it all and do something like this you want it kind of pre-saved as a brush or as in my opinion i call it just a stamp so you can bam 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 <laughs> spam the whole area with those trees here or with this tree then you can do that and of course there are there's the option to have just besides um regular things you can auto tile in here and save it as a brush as well but the last time i tried to show it and it didn't work so <laughs> i'm not going to show it and embarrass myself here and the last thing is the tile animation which is pretty sweet i did a, i guess a video already on this guy here so make it quite fast you can just make an animation let's say four and let's make some disco flowers so you 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 and you and let's go 15 frames per second yeah why not save it up go into our room go under libraries here then i'll find animation one of course you can rename it and put my disco flowers everywhere here and let's start it and yeah disco so this is what you can do <laughs> of course um this uh, auto uh this animation thing is mostly used for some background animation so you have some stuff which is animating so it gives a little bit more life to the background or for some water tiles so you have some waves and stuff so this is actually the main use behind that so hopefully that was of interest to you and now you kind of understand what all those things are why they are being used and how you can use them quite effectively in your game because this is pretty cool stuff of course i didn't show you everything but um I guess this is definitely a good start for you who are having a little bit of trouble with all those values. Hope after that you won't. So that was it for today. Have a good one. One up indeed.